What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and today we are back with another video. And for the video today, we're gonna be looking at four different mic chains across four different budgets. The first one that we're gonna look at is only $550 for the mic and the interface. And we're gonna go in increments all the way up to $5,500, including a mic, a preamp, and an upgraded interface. So I am gonna do a blind shootout in this video so you can hear all of them and you can pick which one is your favorite. If you wanna download those audio files in full resolution, there is a link in the description. That also comes with the answer key for what these are labeled as. So watch the video, give me your blind feedback, let me know in the comments which is your favorite, and then after you're done you can hear those in full resolution and you can actually see what lines up on the answer key. But hopefully you enjoy this video. Before we actually do that blind shootout, I do want to talk about a couple things to keep in mind when you're picking a mic, such as like build quality, feature sets to look out for, uh, and just things that you'll want to keep in mind other than just the pure tone of that microphone. So we're going to talk about that in one second, but before we do, if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe at the end of the video. It really helps us out on the channel a ton. Also, let us know what videos you want to see in the comments down below. And if you want to support the channel after this video, you can head over to makepopmusic.com and check out all of our stuff over there. Sample packs, preset packs, courses. We've got a podcast that we have like four episodes out on. So go check that out after the video. But let's talk a little bit about mic chains. Let's check it. All right, let's talk about what mic chains we're going to look at. So we're going to look at four mic chains. However, there are five examples because the Lewitt 1040 that we're going to look at has multiple different modes that you can use it in. So we're going to be using that in a clear mode and warm mode, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. So the first setup that we're going to be doing is the budget setup, and that is the Loughton Audio LA220, which I believe is like $300, $320, going into the Audient ID14. So this is a little bit more expensive than their entry level interface that you could get with one input, but it's the same exact preamp. So you could get even cheaper than this if you wanted, but this budget altogether comes out to around $550. It's about as entry level as I would say go. Anything less than that, you're gonna see serious quality drop offs. But for me, this is kind of the entry point for at least a solid quality mic setup. Uh, the second setup that we're gonna be looking at is the Slate ML1 going straight into the Apollo. So we're not using the ML1 uh, preamp that they used to sell. I don't even know if they still sell it but the ML1 is $500 and the Universal Apollo Duo that I'm going to be plugging that into is right around $700. So this one comes out to like $1,200, $1,300. Uh, but one quick note that if you do use the ML1 with Slate, that also comes with the virtual microphone system. So that allows you to pair that and use that as different mics inside your computer. So today we're going to be looking at the 251 clone that they have, but there are you know, six or seven different microphones that you can use. So that's one thing that you get for your value with that mic. The third setup that we're gonna be looking at is the Advanced Audio 251. It is Advanced Audio's clone of a Telefunken. I believe that comes right around out to a thousand, maybe $1,100 after tax. Uh, that's going into our Heritage Audio HA81A preamp and EQ. However, we are bypassing the EQ for this video, so you don't need to worry about that. But that unit is right around $1,100, and then that's also going right into our Apollo Twin. And then the last setup that we're doing, there are two examples of this that will be mixed in. That is the Lewitt LC CT1040. That's going straight into that Heritage Audio preamp that I also just talked about and then straight into that Apollo Duo for the uh, analog to digital conversion. And that Lewitt setup, including the mic and everything else, is $5,500, so it is quite the investment. But as you see in this video, we'll talk about some feature sets and some sound quality things to look out for that may make that $5,500 setup worth it opposed to something like a $500 setup. So let's go ahead and talk about things that you'll wanna keep in mind other than the sound quality. If you wanna skip straight to the blind uh, shootout, you can, there will be timestamps and, and markers below, so you can skip all this if you want. But for anybody who might be purchasing a mic or might be looking to upgrade their mic, there are some things that you might wanna look out for other than just pure sound quality. The number one thing that I see a big issue with is build quality and reliability and customer service. So a lot of the time, even a really, really good mic company like Loughton or, or Lewitt or um, any of those companies that make mics all the way from $200 to $4,000, a lot of the time when they're cutting costs, they have to cut that somewhere, and typically that comes off of parts and labor. So they might be made in a different factory, and they might be made with parts that are a little bit less expensive. Sometimes, not always, that can relate to having some issues with quality. You can have issues where the mic is not quite as reliable, 
And if that happens, it's really good to make sure that you're using a company that has solid customer service. So if, you know, unfortunately your mic does go out, you're not stuck with a broken mic for a month or two. You can send that back, get a new one immediately or get a repair immediately. And there's very little downtime. When you're a professional and you're doing this every day and your gear needs to be reliable, sometimes it's worth it to upgrade and get the better parts and get the ones that are made in better manufacturers. The second thing to talk about when you're picking out a microphone is different features. Obviously the sound is gonna be key, but there are a couple things to look at when you're picking a microphone. The number one feature that I see mics advertise is polar patterns. Uh, you'll see some examples in some of the B-roll that we shot. These are markers that basically will tell you where exactly a mic is capturing audio from. So I'll grab my Lewitt 1040 here. This is the front of the microphone. And once I've plugged this into the unit that we've shown in the B-roll, you can pick where you want this mic to capture audio from. So it's always gonna be a mono signal, but most mics, if they're not labeled or if they don't have polar patterns, are gonna operate in cardioid. That means that they're picking up audio from the front of this capsule right here. You can kind of see it in here, maybe in some of that B-roll, but that means that it's gonna capture from the front of that capsule. Some mics also offer Omni, which means that it's gonna capture audio from the front and the back and all around the sides. This might be good for if you're doing something like drum rooms or maybe a live choir or orchestra, where you wanna capture the room, you wanna capture the ambience and you don't want it to be super directional. And then a lot of mics also have figure eight, which means it's gonna capture audio at the front and the back of the capsule, but it's gonna reject the sides. This would be good for if you have a duet singing on different sides of the microphone, or if you have a singer on one side and a guitar player on one side. Basically, however you want that audio to be captured is how you need to set your polar patterns. And I've seen mics as low as $200 have configurable polar patterns, and I've seen mics as expensive as $3,000 not have them. So just keep in mind what you're using the mic for, what the source is gonna be. If that's something that you need to have, make sure you're paying attention to polar patterns because that can be a make or break thing, at least for me, when I'm looking at microphones. The second thing to keep in mind is dB pads. You'll see a lot of mics that have attenuation pads, so minus 10 dB, minus 20 dB. Like for instance, this one, this Loughton Audio, this does not have one, but the upgraded mic one step up from this does. And basically what an attenuation pad does is if an audio source is super loud, so let's say drum cymbals or guitar amp or something like that, and even at the lowest setting, your preamp is clipping or it's coming in super hot, you can switch that attenuation pad on and it's gonna lower that gain by that amount. So for something like the LCT 1040, that's got steps all the way from negative 6 dB all the way to like negative 18, I believe. And that's really good if you're using loud sources and you wanna make sure you're not overloading your preamps. A lot of mics also have this kind of uh, feature where you can make sure that you're not gonna clip on the way in. So if you are recording loud sources, make sure you pay attention to dB pads. And then the last feature that most mics will offer or may skip on is having something like a filter. So a lot of mics will have roll off filters, especially for low end, where you can cut anything under like 50 Hertz or maybe even hundred Hertz. This is really good if you're tracking something like vocals and you don't wanna capture like the AC hum in the room, or you don't wanna capture people bumping into the mic stand, or you don't wanna capture things like plosives. I almost always will have some kind of roll off engaged. Some mics as well will have a top end roll off. I tend to not really use those very often. Most of my mics that I have don't really have that option anyway. Uh, but if you were doing something super bright like guitar amps or, or really, really bright drum overheads, something like a high end roll off may be conducive to your workflow. So those are kind of the main features you're gonna wanna look out for. And then when you're looking at mics across different budgets, that's where you'll start to kind of get specialized features. So we talked about how the Slate ML1 has the virtual microphone system so you can pick your mics afterwards. You've seen the console for this Lewitt 1040 right here. Uh, this mic is $3,500, which is a serious investment. However, with you having the option to run that in a tube mode or an FET circuit, or blend those together, and then you've got your different kind of modules where you can do warm, clear, saturated, dark, and you've got all of these different attenuation patterns and polar patterns and things like that, that makes this mic super, super flexible. So you'll hear in this example, if you download the key, I use the warm setting for this mic and I use the clear setting for this mic. And it's the same exact setup, same exact mixing chain and everything other than that. But you'll hear how wildly different that sounds. And that's a big thing that you're getting when you pay the money for something like this is you're getting that flexibility so you can have one mic that kind of does 12 different things. So keep that in mind when you're buying a microphone because feature sets to me are almost as important as sound quality, uh, which I guess that should be the last thing we talk about is sound quality. Most mics, especially budget mics that are coming in like under $500, 
you're gonna run into the thing where they might sound really solid on some things and they might sound almost unusable on others. And that's because typically with budget-friendly mics and entry-level mics, you're gonna run into the issue where the top end is just a little bright and harsh, the mids are not super defined and not punchy. So on some sources, it may sound scooped, it may sound bright, it may sound quote-unquote plasticky. And that's where you're kind of getting that issue from. And then when you get into something like a Telefunken 251 that's $10,000, that mic has such good parts and it's so tried and true and the tubes in that mic are so good. You can use it on almost anything and it's gonna sound almost mix ready. So that's one thing that you are paying for when you kind of upgrade your mics is you're getting a mic that might be a little bit more versatile on different sources. So, you know, male vocals, female vocals, low chesty vocals, thin falsetto vocals, bright horns, uh, you know, boomy kick drums. These are things that budget mics might not do the best job at capturing because they're kind of made for one thing in mind. And if you start dipping outside of where they really shine, they, they start to fall apart really, really easily versus something like a really, really high-end mic that can kind of take anything that you throw at it. So that's what to keep in mind when you are picking a mic. I know that we ran a little bit long in that, but I think that's as important as the sound quality that we're about to hear. But let's go ahead and let's start looking at the actual blind shootout of these different mic chains. As you can see, everything is labeled with just A, B, C, D, E. They're all out of order. However, we're gonna look at raw and then some EQ compression and DSing and then kind of like a full mix. The letters are gonna correspond with each one. So like A and raw is gonna be the same as A in the full mix. And you can download that key with those high resolution files in the description below. Other than that, I tried my best to gain stage everything as equally as possible. You can see right here that all of the waveforms look pretty similar even with using different interfaces and preamps and stuff like that, I really did my best to hit a VU meter the same. And even when we get into the mixing, gain stage it all so there's not massive volume jumps. It may sound like there's volume jumps for things like um, just perceived loudness where different mics sit, but I can promise you I did my best to actually level out everything. Let's go ahead and let's start listening. Oh, last thing I should say. These are all different vocal takes because we had to use multiple interfaces and we had to use the same preamps and inputs for things. So I did sing this five separate times. However, I sang it as close as I could every time to each other. So it's not like there's one super low chesty, there's one high falsetto. So just keep in mind these are different takes, but they were sung in the exact same spot in my room with the exact same proximity to the mic and I sang them as close as I possibly could. Now. Let's check out the first setup. Here's setup A. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is, but let's take a listen. I'll even pull up a pro cue so you can see the frequency response. I wanna call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can't shut me down without a warning I wanna call you Let's hear that in solo now. I wanna call you first thing in the morning but I know that I can shut me down without a warning. It sounds pretty good off the bat to me. There are no things that you really need to look out for. It is on the brighter side and it is uh, slightly scooped in the middle. So I'm not trying to give away any hints or anything, but just use your ears again on YouTube. This might sound completely different. Please download the high res files, but that is mic setup A. There's no glaring issues in that to me. That one sounds pretty solid. Let's take a look at mic setup B. I'll also pull up a pro cue for this one and we'll hear it in the mix with that piano. I want to call you first thing in the morning but I know that I can't shut me down without a warning. I want to call you first thing in the morning but I know that I can't shut me down without a warning. Let's hear it in solo. I want to call you First thing in the morning But I know that I can shut me down without a warning So as you can hear, it is a completely different tone. This one to me is a lot warmer. It's got some saturation in the mids. It's a little bit fuller, but maybe that's what you're looking for for a ballad. Maybe it's not. To me, this one sounds a little bit dark for my voice and for the song at hand, but still usable nonetheless. I really, really like that setup. It's just a little bit uh, dark for me in this setting. Here is setup C. I'll go ahead and pull up a pro cue so you can see this one as well. Here's setup C with the piano. I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can shut me down without a warning Here's it in solo. I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can 
This one to me sounds a lot darker. It's got like that high end roll off. And to me, this one's got this almost tinniness in the high mids. I don't love this on my voice for this song and in this register. Uh, let's take a look where you can kind of see this compared to something like the A mic or the B mics. So here's the frequency response compared to A. You'll see uh, just kind of the normal frequency response a C and then the red outline will be the A mic. I wanna call you first thing in the morning. But I know that I can, you shut me down with that. You see, we're getting a lot of high end roll off here and that kind of airiness. We're getting a little bit more low end down here. So it's a much warmer, much kind of more rolled off mic. Could work for it, the instance. I don't love it for this personally, but that's mic setup C. And then we've got mic setup D. Here's what this one sounds like with a Pro Q so you can see what's going on. I want to call you first thing in the morning. Here's in the mix. But I know that I can. You shut me down without a warning. I want to call you. To me, this setup is starting to thin out a little bit in the low mids from like 200 to 500. It's still pretty bright. Um, let's hear that versus like mic C. So I'll play D and then I will alternate with C. Here's my D. I want to call you first thing in the morning. But I know that I can. You shut me down without a warning. I want to call you first. Let's hear compared to B. I want to call you first thing in the morning. But I know that I can. You shut me down without. Compared to A, here's D. I want to call you. First thing in the morning, but I know that I can. You shut me down without a warning. It's a little similar to A to me in terms of like the brightness and kind of the the more minimal lows and low mids. However, I will say that this kind of clears up a hole that A had in the kind of high mids. So to me, this one's slightly flatter, but we'll see once we do some processing. And then here is mic setup E. So this is the last one that we'll look at. Here's it uh, by itself with the piano. I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can't you shut me down without a warning Here's it in solo I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can't you shut me down without a warning To me, this one's my favorite. This tends to have uh, to me, this is the brightest mic, but it has really, really smooth top end for some reason. And it still has really full punchy mids and low mids, but it's not super boomy and it's not super, super dark. Let's take a look at comparing this to like mic A on the frequency response. Here's what this sounds like. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can't. You shut me down without a warning. The main thing I'm seeing is you're getting a little bit more saturation in this kind of mid region right here and you're getting a bit more brightness. However, to me, it still sounds pretty smooth and pretty usable. So that's what these all sound like in raw. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at what they sound like with some slight uh, like EQ compression, things like that. I'll show you the chain for this so you can just see exactly what's happening. We have a, all of these are gonna be the same. We have a Pro Q just rolling off all the low end below like 80. We have a virtual mix rack just doing some slight EQ with an 1176 and an opto compressor. We have one DSer catching SH and we have one DSer catching S and neither of those are doing more than maybe two or three dB of reduction. And then I'm finally running it through auto tune because that's what all vocals go through for me anyway. And then we're sending everything to the sends the exact same. So here's mic A with the processing. One thing to keep in mind that we didn't talk about earlier, it's typically cheaper mics, especially as you start making them super bright and sit in something like a really dense pop mix. They do start to get a little bit thin and shrill and the sibilance becomes kind of out of control. We'll see if we run into that issue today. I specifically picked something that was just going over a piano ballad so you could hear the vocals almost as raw as possible. Um, but keep in mind that if you're working with a pop mix that's got 200 things happening, these might not sound the exact same and they might not work the exact same. So here is option A with its uh, kind of like a, a raw chain. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. I want to call you. To me, that is completely usable. It sounds great. Here is Mike B with the exact same processing chain. I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can't shut me down without a warning 
I want to call you. Definitely darker if I were actually mixing this, which we'll see in a second, I would brighten this one up. But I do like where those lows and low mids are sitting. It sounds full without sounding really boomy or honky. And that to me is a really good sign of a, of a mic that's working well for your voice is when those low mids feel nice and full, but they're not super resonant and super like hum, 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 hum. That's like my least favorite thing ever in a vocal. So that one sounds good, usable, but a little dark for me. Here's C. I want to call you. First thing in the morning But I know that I can You shot me down without a warning this one to me is super dark, but the low mids are not as saturated and punchy and defined as B. The top end is not as bright or even smooth as A. And to me, this one has a little bit of a mid-range thing that I'm not loving for my voice right now. So that's Mike C, just with my feedback. Again, pick your favorite. I sent this to, to like one of my friends, Clay. Mike C was his favorite in the entire shootout. Mike C was my least favorite. So everybody's got different tastes and different preferences, but that's just something to keep in mind. Here's Mike D. I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can you shot me down without a warning So I'll be honest in the raw version I liked D a little bit more than A I thought they were kind of similar but once I added a little bit of processing I think A is actually taking the processing a little bit better To me D has this weird like hole now in the high mids and it has like this scoop sound that's making it sound a little bit thin and brittle. You know, I, you may be surprised when you see what the answer key is to these setups. To me, D right now is probably my least favorite. Let's go ahead and let's hear E and see how that one sounds with some slight processing. E was my favorite in the raw. Let's see if it continues with a little bit. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can't you shut me down without a warning. To me, E is still my favorite. It's still the brightest, but it's, it's silky. It's still got the best kind of low mid relationship where it's full, but it's not honky. It's not boomy. It's not like really resonant and disgusting. To me, I would say so far, E is my favorite, followed by B, followed by A, followed by D, followed by C. That would be my ranking right now. I'll let you hear all of these in solo one time before we go on to a mixed version. Here's Mike A in solo. I want to call you. First thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Mike B. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Mike C. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Mike D. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Mike E. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. So it's funny because in solo, my preferences are actually completely different for which is my favorite and least favorite. But then when you hear it with something as simple as a piano, that completely changes. So again, that's one reason that we don't really mix in solo is because I really like D in solo. It sounded bright, it sounded a little bit punchy, but in the mix, it has this weird hole in it that I'm not loving for my voice and the song at hand. Now for this full mix version, this one is a really similar chain. The only thing I've done is adjusted some EQ and compression settings, just the hair to kind of suit whatever microphone I was using best. So this is not like a full, full, full vocal mix or anything like that. But this one does have a little bit of finessing where, you know, I was doing some dynamic EQ in places, taking out some resonances. So this one would be like, if I were tracking a vocal, this would be my tracking chain for each microphone. And they're all slightly different just to suit that setup. So here is A with kind of a tracking mix. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. I want to call you first thing in the morning, but I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. I want to call you first thing in the morning. But I know that I can you shut me down without a warning I want to call you first thing in the morning But I know that I can you shut me down without a warning I want to call you 
first thing in the morning But I know that I can't You shot me down without a warning Just some notes, just like listening back. Honestly, I could probably drive the top end of C up a little bit more with something like a high shell for like a mag EQ or a fresh air. It's so dark, I don't think it would get really sibilant and bright. I think if I make mic A much brighter, it will get a little bit sibilant. I think if I make mic B much brighter, it'll get brighter and it, I don't think it'll be that sibilant, but I think it might start to kind of offset the low mid balance that I'm really liking. And then mic D again, just kind of has like this weird mid response where it feels a little bit thin, where the low mids to me now feel slightly boomy, but the mid mids feel a little bit hollow. Top end to me feels a little bit brittle. It's not my favorite. And then mic E, I would say this to me sounds the most like how my voice in my own head sounds. This to me is like just a really, really clear microphone that is working really, really well for this mix and probably any other mix. So I would say that my final ranking with some slight mixing would be Mike E is my number one spot. Um, Mike B would probably be my number two spot just because I do like how punchy it is. Mike A would be my number three spot. Mike D would be my number four spot. And Mike C would be my number five spot. I'm not loving the kind of like high mid resonance around like one to three K on this mic with my voice and with this song and where I am in my register. So there are my definitive ranks. I'll do one more example where we can listen to all of these with their mix and solo, and then that should do it for this. Again, if you wanna download all of the files and do your own comparison and rank them yourself, you can hit all of that in the description. But here is each mic chain with the mix, but with no piano behind it. I wanna call you first thing in the morning. But I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Here's Mike B. I want to call you first thing in the morning. Feels more punchy. But I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Here's C. I want to call you first thing in the morning. Sounds a little dark. But I know that I can you shut me down without a warning. Here's D. I want to call you. First thing in the morning But I know that I can You shot me down without a warning Kind of brittle, here's E I wanna call you First thing in the morning But I know that I can You shot me down without a warning there's all of them. Hopefully I haven't given too much away with kind of my feedback on mics or I haven't persuaded you. Um, again, download the raw so you can hear them in full quality on your system. You can, I even gave you the piano stem as well if you want to poke that in. But there is a comparison of four different mic setups at four very, very, very different budgets. Again, that fifth example is we just have a version of the Lewitt 1040 in warm and a version of the Lewitt 1040 in clear. And I think when you download that answer key, you're going to see how different uh, the different modules on something like that are and how flexible that mic is, which again kind of justifies that $3,500 price point opposed to something like this Loughton, which is only 300 bucks and what you get is what you get. However, to me, I won't say which place I put the Loughton in, but this was higher than I would have expected. I will say that I like this better than a chain that was probably six times, seven times its price. So Download that key so you can see uh, which is your favorite and then let us know in the comments down below which one you like the best. But there is our comparison of all the mic chains. And there we have it. There are four mic chains at four vastly different budgets. Again, this video is all blind, so I'm not gonna say which was which, but I will say I definitely do have a clear favorite. And for me, the investment of a good mic chain does go a long way because when I did the blind shootout myself, my favorite was by far the most expensive chain. And you just get some things like I talked about earlier with feature sets and you know, if you have a mic that can do a modeled thing like that Slate ML1, or if you have a mic that can be adjustable like the Lewitt 1040, that tends to get you a lot more bang for your buck rather than just one microphone that's doing one thing. So when you are picking out a mic or when you are shooting out a mic in a studio with a vocalist, make sure you pay attention to what sounds the best, what kind of song you're doing, what kind of vocalists they are, how loud are they going to be, what's the room sounding like, and then do your shootout and pick your mic that feels the best for you, for the singer, and for the song at hand. So hopefully you like this video. Let us know again in the comments down below which mic and which chain was your favorite. Other than that, like, comment, and subscribe to help us out a ton. Head over to makepopmusic.com if you want to support the channel. And other than that, we will be back next week with much more content. Until then, much love everyone. Peace. Yeah.